I'm Sean, this is a McLaren 720S, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take the ECU out if you're going to tune it. I am an M Engineering dealer, so I do this all the time. And if you go to the website in the description below, emfautos.com, you too can purchase one of these tunes from me and use this guide to take your ECU out and put it back in. So first things first, we've got to get this in the air. And this is the jack that I've got. This is a very common jack to use, something of this style. Uh, you might notice that it doesn't particularly go particularly low uh, and then extend out. And there's a reason I'm going to use this in the example, and it's because it's very common to use one like this because you just happen to have it. It is not the best option for you to use. Uh, if you have some of the larger ones, um, like a, a two and a half ton or three ton. Um, there are examples of it where they kind of come down and then come way out. Those are the best possible option. And the reason I say that is for the lift point that is right here. It's kind of hard to, that flat spot right there. Uh, this jack that I've got will not actually uh, get to that point. Uh, it will hit the body just barely right here. If I had to lift up, uh, it would quite possibly clear it. It probably would. Um, but I'm just going to show you the other option uh, just to kind of show you what you end up having to do when you have an insufficient jack for this. So over here in the middle, there is a little bubble right there. It's a little, little green bubble. And that is where we want to lift it up. Now, unless I have a hockey puck on here, there's nothing special about it. It is just a hockey puck meant for hockey. Uh, if you don't have one of those, um, the reason that we use that is because this flat spot here is little teeth. We don't want it to, to uh, get into the tub. And sometimes these rubber pads are not particularly thick. Uh, sometimes they work fine, but I want to make sure that stays away, even though a little bubble is in there, uh, there's going to be some compression. So we're going to make sure that it cannot be in contact. So we're going to use that. When I haven't had those, you can take uh, a rag and kind of fold it over several times. Put that on there and that will prevent it from happening as well. So we're going to get the lift point in place over here. And when you jack it up from the middle over here, it's going to lift to the front of the car up and the rear and we're only going to lift it up enough to get the rear to get the wheel off because the ECU is back here. You'll see the front has gone up quite a bit. The back is up just a little bit. Using the other jack point in the back is the preferred way. Only the rear will go up. Uh, I like to use that one as much as possible. But again, this is the worst case scenario. So we're using the other one. So now we're going to take the wheel off. It is a 17 millimeter. You can use an impact. I always use an impact. If you don't have an impact, you can still use a breaker bar, uh, a ratchet itself. Probably not going to make it. Uh, those are pretty tight but these are 96 foot pounds. So note you're getting into taking them off. Uh, if you're going to use a breaker bar, you're gonna to have to use an extension like a three inch. Otherwise, it won't clear here. So you've gotta have that extension on there. So be prepared for that. Now you might notice the last one that I took off was this bottom one because uh, in some cases, which is not gonna be the case with this wheel, but in some cases, uh, if you take other ones out, the wheel can actually tilt kind of this way and kick out. If you leave that one in, it will never do that until the last one. You kind of get a good hand on it to make sure that it's not going to do that. Now with the wheel off, we've got these two Phillips screws that are plastic. Don't use a drill, do it by hand. Turn them, let them kind of back out on their own. You'll kind of get a feel for it and see why. There are T30s over here, 
here, here, a couple up here, down into the fuser. Make sure you get all those out. This side, you don't have to deal with. Uh, this rear section is the one that is on top. So when you get all these screws out, this piece will just pop right out. If it doesn't just kind of fall out of place, you're missing a screw, find it, don't yank on it, and pull it out. Now the easiest way to get this out from this point, because this is our ECU right here, we're gonna take these T25 bolts out because why would you use the same size head on everything? Take these out, which will make this come loose and then we can access these two plugs. Uh, there's a little push, uh, you'll kind of see it right there. You push it in and then this slides down. On those it pops right out, uh, but I'm not sure that I can do that with one hand. So we're gonna get this out and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now I've spun this around so you can kind of see what's going on. We've got this little push tab right here. We've got to push on it and pull up at the same time, which is easier with two hands than it is one. But that makes this connector pop off. And we do this once more on this one. And I'm gonna have to two hand that, I think, to get it loose. Yeah, I'm gonna have to two hand that. But that slides off like the other one. Now you've got a ton of little pins in here. So you wanna make sure that when you're doing this, you are pulling it straight off, not at an angle. Take your time, pull the plug all the way back. If it's not sliding out, the little latch there is not all the way back. It will pop it right off when it is all the way out. So we are going to leave this in this state while this is being unlocked. So what's the total turnaround time? It's three days uh, if you're doing overnight shipping. So. What I'm doing is this is now Sunday night, Monday morning. I'm going to send this ECU off with early AM delivery. They're going to have it uh, Tuesday morning, because remember, it's going out Monday. They're going to have it Tuesday morning. They're going to work on it Tuesday. I've already given them a heads up so they know it's coming. And then Tuesday afternoon, they will overnight it back to me. I'll have it Wednesday and I will put it right back in here. Now, when I get the ECU back in here, it will already have all the maps that I've worked with them on. And if you're working with me on one of these sales, uh, I will take care of all that on the back end. We'll have a discussion on what your wants and needs are. I'll make that happen, coordinate that with them so you don't have to worry about it. We go back and forth, we get all worked out. It will show up with the maps. It has to go to them to be unlocked the first time. Now, if we wanna make any changes after that, we can reflash it through the OBD2 port. That's gonna be in another video. But the first time it's being sent off, like if you want me to come to you and do all this, we have to have three day turnaround because it absolutely has to be sent to be unlocked before it's tuned. We don't wanna leave it on that jack because it is hydraulic. There is the possibility that it could come down and we don't wanna mess up this rotor. So unless you're gonna have it on a jack stand, you should do like I'm going to do. And that's putting the wheel back on. I'm just gonna put it on. You don't have to torque the studs, just put them back in, get them in there, and uh, then let the car back down. And then I will feel okay about this until the ECU comes back and I can put it back in. Now I sent my ECU off on Monday. It is now Wednesday at 10 a.m. My ECU was delivered. And here's the box it came in. So it'll come back in this, nice and protected. And we've got this box inside. So this box has our 
dongle and USB cable. Obviously, instruction, you can scan that. Uh, but this is so we can log data um, through software that you can install on your laptop. And uh, you can log all kinds of things. You can actually clear check engine lights. There's some other things you can do there too. Uh, so that's what that is for. And also, if you're going to reflash, um, say there's a little glitch somewhere in your tune, um, or you want to change a feature, change the map for whatever reason at any point, so you're not tied to what it is. So I'm actually going to do Catalyst downpipes here, and I'll show that process of re-uploading a new file uh, when you do that. But that is what that is for. Straight out of the box, it's already programmed. You can just put the ECU in, and you're good to go. So now we're going to put it back in the car. Much like the way this came out, we're gonna go back in plugging in our plugs first. Uh, so our screw holes are right here, so it's gonna be facing this way. We're gonna do this one first, push it in, and uh, it'll go in just a little bit. Take our uh, lever, do it till it clicks. Same thing on this one, push it in till it clicks and we're good to go there. These little uh, clip right here, make sure our harness is clipped in there and secure. And then we're gonna take our T25. These do not need to be insanely torqued, uh, but they do need to be snug. Make sure that these do not come out. So I've got the ECU back in place. We can go ahead and put the liner back in. One thing you can do to make this a little bit easier, make sure it's lined up is your uh, plastic pins back here. Get those in place. You don't have to uh, tighten them just yet. But that should get you assembled in roughly the right position. And then you can put the rest of your T30s back in. I do recommend uh, getting these in by hand, get a few turns on there before putting any tools on it uh, because you can actually get them slightly in sideways. You might think it's in there, but it's not. Just get a few turns in there by hand, get them all in there first started, then go back and secure them. And you do not have to uh, torque these to anything that specific, just make sure they're nice and snug. They don't have to be crazy tight, but they do need to be very snug. Now don't forget these little plastic guys, they are Phillips head. Uh, do not use a drill on these, do it by hand, uh, both literally or figuratively. You can either use a Phillips head screwdriver or I, to get these in, I didn't show it on camera, but I literally just turned them by hand uh, until they got all the way in there. That's all that's necessary. These things will strip out very easily. Uh, so make sure you're wary of that. And the last thing we need to do is put the wheel back on. This seems obvious, but believe it or not, people screw this up. I put them on there. I've got all the lugs already in place. Twist it until uh, you put your thumb right there so when it sinks in, you know it's there. Uh, I am using an impact, uh, which you should not due to the point of ugga chuggas on these. Uh, it can actually cause problems with some sensors. Uh, so I've got it on the lowest setting and I'm just gonna go until we get one little click there and that's okay. Uh, you definitely do not want to actually put any amount of torque. This is only about 50 or 60 foot pounds uh, doing it this way.
And from here, we're going to actually torque it to an actual correct spec, which is 96 foot pounds. You may notice I started from the bottom and that's to make sure that the wheel stays flat against the hub so it doesn't kick out uh, because there'll be a little bit of an angle, that kind of thing. And uh, so we start at the bottom and we do an opposing corner and then an opposing corner, an opposing corner. And we wanna do that to make sure that everything lays perfectly flat. And when it's torqued, it's gonna to be torqued to uh, the exact same torque and not bound up and uh, you know not a little wobbly or anything like that. That is how you do that. Again, 96 foot pounds. And that's all there is to it. We have removed the ECU, sent it off, put it back in, and we are now tuned with all of the maps that I have specified for this car. So, if you want to get one of these M Engineering tunes, go to emfautos.com and they're on the website, or you can shoot me messages on Instagram, Facebook, wherever. We can work out specifics. Uh, Make sure you like and subscribe so you have the other videos and I will be doing future videos which uh, will have testing of stock versus tuned and catless and all those changes and that kind of thing. So make sure you're checking out those other videos and I'll see you in the next one.